Okay, guys, uh, this is the review for quiz sections 11.1 .1 through 11.4. Uh, it's mainly circles. And in question number one, they're asking us to name the circle. Every time you name a circle, you have to use a symbol for circle. So a circle, a circle and a dot in the middle. Circle N is the answer for number one. Chords. There are different chords. A chord is a segment. A chord is a segment whose endpoints lie on the circle. So therefore, one of the chords is EF. And you have to have a segment symbol on top. A special one, it's DF. And I'm saying that that's a special one because that is basically a diameter. The radius, actually called radii because it's more than one. Radii. The radii, one of them is CN. I should put the symbol on top. D N N E N N F. Can so the chords are E F so it's E F D F that's a special one because it's also a diameter. The radius is basically radii because it's more than one. It's CN, DN or ND, NE or EN, and NF or FN. The tangent, there's no tangent line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a tangent line, okay, so that you can see an example of that. So this could be a tangent line. A line that passes through one point on the circle and it keeps on going. So this could be the tangent line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a point, and I'm going to say, well, this is uh, DA. So the tangent line would be line AD. Or also, if I have a letter, an italic letter, indicating that that's the, the line, you can say, or line M. I'm adding it just so that you can have an example, okay? Not that you can do that on the test. Do not add anything else, okay? On I'm sorry, on the quiz. So on the quiz, everything is going to be given. You just have to identify which one is a secant, which one is a tangent. So talking about secant, let me add a secant. What is a secant line? Well, I'm going to draw a line passing through two points on the circle, okay? So that line that passes through the circle and touches the circle at two points is uh, a secant. So this is CF. Now something that I need to make sure I put is the arrows on both the tangent and the secant because they're, they're lines. Now if I have an italic letter for the line CF, like for example L, or N or whichever, well then you can say line L. Sorry about that. Uh, so secant, it's uh, it could be line CF with two points, two letters or capital letters, or if there's an italic letter, then it would be line L. Now question number two. In question number two, they're giving me the circle J. So this is circle J right here, and has a radius of 10 units. Circle K, which is this one, and has a radius of 8 units. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put that measurement on the circle. So it's 10 units, 8 units. And also they're saying BC it's 5.4. So that piece, that segment, is 5.4 units. So since I know that the radius is 10, well, the piece B, uh, BJ or JB would be 10 minus 5.4, which is 4.6. And we can do the same thing with uh, CK. That piece 
Well, since the radius of the circle K is eight units, then that piece would be eight minus the 5.4, which is basically 2.6. So 2.6 units. Now we can answer the questions. They say find CK. So CK, that segment CK, it's this piece. This is CK. So that is 2.6. The second one, AB. Segment AB, okay, well, that is from A to B, so that means that we're going to add 10 to 4.6, so it's 14.6 units. Whatever the measurement of the segment is, that's what we use. Next one, JK. Okay, for JK, that is all of this, so it's three pieces together. So I need to add 4.6 plus 5.4 plus 2.6. When you add all of this together, that gives you 12.6 units. And you can do the, add, the, the sum if you want to. Now AD. AD, segment AD. The segment AD, let me put the line on the top. AD it's from the beginning, A, all the way to D. So that means that I'm going to have 10 plus 10. So all of this here, it's 20. 20. And then this piece is 2.6. And this piece is 8. So when you add 20 for this diameter, and then 2.6 and 8, that gives you 30.6. 30.6 units and that's it for number two okay you guys number three number three they say an AD and CG are diameters so this is a diameter and this is a diameter of the circle B we need to find CD well CD it's an arc okay so let me put that this is an arc RCD a little cap arc on the top. So CD, well that is given. This is the central angle, so that would be the same thing. So that would be 55 degrees. So 55 degrees. Let me raise it. 55 degrees. Now AC. What is AC? Well that's two letters, more than likely it's a minor arc. So there you go. Since this is a diameter, that's 180 minus 55 that gives you 125 degrees because it's the, the remaining uh, amount from 180 and 55. Now the arc CFG. For CFG, C passes through F, stops at G. CFG, well, that was a diameter. CG was a diameter, so that should be 180 degrees. And then CGD, okay, I need to start at C, pass through G, so this is C, pass through G, and stops at D. So it's everything except for the 55. So the whole circle is 360 minus 55, subtract those two numbers, 360 minus 55, and that is, this is an arc, that is 305 degrees. Okay, number four. In problem number four, I need to find out how much is the arc DA. All of these are arches. So it's an arc, arc, and another arc. Okay, so, so DA. What is DA? Well, DA, it's this part right here. So it's everything except for the blue portion. So it's 100 percent minus 67 percent that gives me 33 percent okay and percent is basically 
point thirty three in decimal form. So I want point thirty three of the whole circle, and the whole circle is three hundred and sixty degrees. So you need to multiply point thirty three times three hundred and sixty, and then that gives you one hundred and eighteen point eight degrees. Now. You know, download an app in the cell phone or, you know, one, one of the electronic devices that would help you uh, get all these values, but also um, make sure that it's a scientific calculator so that you can have sign on that, okay? Now, the next one, it's ARC ACD. Well, ACD is the same thing as AD. It's just another way of representing that same ARC. So it's the same answer. 118.8 degrees. Now, arc C, D, B. Just travel around, along, um, around the circle on the circumference, okay? So, I'm going to start at C, then pass through D, and go around, 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 all the way around, all the way. There you go. Stop here. So, C, D, B... It's everything except for the green section, you know, this sector right here. So this is 12%. Well, it's 100 minus 12%, 100 minus 12%. That is 88%. You have to change it into decimal, so it's 0.88. So it's 0.88 of 360 degrees. When you multiply that, you're going to have 316.8 degrees. Now, question number five. Okay, here we have two chords that are congruent because the arc N M and arc PQ are congruent. And since they're congruent, then we can say that the chords are congruent. So therefore, I need to let them equal to each other. So when I let them equal to each other, I'm going to have 26 equals 3x plus 5. So I solve for x, subtract 5. 26 minus 5 is 21 equals 3x, and then you divide by 3. So the x by itself, it's 7. So that's the answer for number 5.